What is up guys? So with season five, like wave control and freezing has become even more important in bot lane especially. So with these rise of like these mega tanks with Cinder Hulk and stuff like that, it's even more important for ADs to get farm and items quickly. And well, if you're freezing, you're making the enemy AD weak and it's a huge advantage for your team. So the big reasons why you would freeze are because it makes it easier for your jungler to gank, it denies experience, it denies gold from the enemy carry. And just before we kick off, in case anyone isn't sure, wave control is talking about how you manage the minions in your lane. And freezing is keeping the wave in an advantageous position for you while it keeps the enemy away from them. So the best place to start is with wave control and there are kind of three positions that the wave can have in bot lane. Either the minions will be towards your turret, they'll be in the middle of the lane or towards their turret. We're going to be looking at a bird's eye view of bot lane because this is really the easiest way that I can show you these different zones and why each one is going to be good. So first one is at your turret. So their minions outnumber yours and it means you can't trade because they have the minion advantage. It will eventually push into tower and you'll have to farm under tower. Now this doesn't sound too bad, but they have no minions to kill so they can focus on hitting you Whereas you have minions to kill so you have to split your focus You are unlikely to get ganked unless you get poked too much and dive But they do have lane control in this position So moving on to the middle zone the orange zone and they can zone you if they're ahead or you can zone them If you're ahead and because the minions are gonna be equal on either side There's no advantage here when you're in the dead center of a lane, it's actually quite difficult to gank you, so you're probably unlikely to get ganked at this position, and if you are gonna get ganked, you'll get ganked from behind. When the lane is in the middle here, lane control is pretty even, and it comes down to who is actually stronger in a fight. So finally, moving on to the red zone, and this is when you're pushing. So your minions outnumber theirs, so you're in control. You can trade, you can poke them under tower for free, and they have to focus on CSing. So at this point, you are likely to get ganked, but you do have lane control, even if you're not actually stronger in a 2v2 fight. So those are the three main outcomes of wave control in bot lane, but let's just kind of look at how you achieve each one, I guess. So pushing is gonna get you an advantage. It's the easiest way to establish lane control because they can't really fight back and it forces them to focus on the minions and not you. They may miss some CS under tower, but you're still feeding them the wave by pushing it into them. So you are still in control, but kind of what good is it if you're still feeding them gold? So this is kind of where freezing comes in. This is the way you deny gold. So the way to do it is to push the wave into tower and when it comes back, it will slowly push to you. You only want to last hit and let the wave ease back just past the middle towards your tower. So this is where you can freeze and zone the enemy AD carry properly. If they come for CS, you leave the wave and you fight them. And if they don't, then you continue to last hit, sometimes killing a few more to keep the wave where it is. So if we go back to our zone example from before, this is kind of the ideal place to really have a freeze. It's not too close to your tower, but it's at the end of your lane. What you're really achieving or doing by all of this is you're forcing the enemy AD to sit back. They're gonna miss gold, they'll miss experience, and it's putting them further behind than if you were to push the wave into them. So you might have seen this clip already, I did run it earlier when I was talking about freezing, but I wanted to go over it properly to show you what I mean. So in this clip, Jinx is CSing pretty well under tower, she's actually hardly missing any, and Amumu is starting to sniff around for a gank because I've been pushing so long, so this is when I decide to freeze. I back away from the wave and I only last hit as late as possible, and I slowly let it reach my tower. So when you've decided to freeze, you will actually let her get some CS while she pushes it into you, but you just have to remember that that's nothing compared to what you're about to deny her. Now you'll see I tank these caster minions myself so that they don't attack my minions and then I use my Q to thin them out a little bit so they don't push too hard and then I start to only last hit again. This is really the perfect position to hold a wave and freeze it if you're stronger and as you see Jinx comes forward to try and CS and we instantly get her flash. So the last thing to really point out is a little bit different with lane control and it's when to push and when to base. So bot lane is very item dependent, right? Meaning that when the enemy bases, you ideally want to as well because you kind of don't want them to come running back at you with a pickaxe and all you have is Doran's blade to defend yourself. 
So if you're going to base first, this is a question that people ask me a lot. You actually always want to push your last wave really hard and then leave straight away. If you base after, either you kill your opponent or you force them to leave, you want to push that wave into tower and make them miss as much as CS as possible. The worst thing you can do is not push it because a wave is going to build up with that wave already there and another one coming in and you'll give them all this experience and gold from those waves that have built up and you won't get any advantage from forcing them out of lane. So these are the basics of wave control and freezing, I guess in simple terms, but this is all you need to know until you reach a low diamond standard. Just try it in your next game and I promise you you will see a bigger difference between how strong you are and how strong the enemy AD is by the end of the lane phase. As always though, that is all for this video, so I'll catch you next time.